boss man. Ready? One, two, three. I want to sing a song for you, Lord. And Lord, for you, I want to sing a song. And I want to lift my voice to heaven. Listen to the angels sing along. A song of your faith. Good morning, everybody. How are you guys? Everybody good? All right. Well, I'm just so glad that all of you are here this Sunday with us. Welcome. If you're visiting us, uh, we are just so excited to be worshiping the Lord in this time. And, uh, and today we're going to be doing some amazing things. They're going to be taking some communion. Um, but most importantly, we're going to be worshiping our God. We're going to be worshiping the Father. We're going to be worshiping uh, the one that's in control of everything. And, uh, and so what a privilege and what an honor. And so let's open with a word of prayer and we'll continue worship. Father, we just thank you so much for this morning. We thank you that you have given us everything we need for life and godliness in you. Lord, we thank you for this rain even this morning, as many of us need it. Lord, we thank you for your presence, as many of us need it. And so we just ask, Lord, that you'd open up our hearts this morning, you'd open up our minds, you'd open up just everything about us that we'd be able to draw near to you this morning as you draw near to us. Father, we'd find strength in you, we'd find hope in you, we'd find courage in you, and we'd walk with you. So Lord, we love you, we thank you, it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.
originally planned on doing Joy to the World this morning. I know that's it's kind of out of season for what we would traditionally think, but we, we cut that one, and I think we forgot to tell Miss Diane. I'm sorry. <laughs>
God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. Universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy. Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy. Universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and beyond our galaxy you are holy holy the universe declares your majesty you are holy holy Lord of heaven and earth If you've got your elements of the Lord's Supper, I would invite you to take these. And for just a moment, I would like for you to examine yourself. This is not something we come to out of routine. It's not something that we do out of habit. But it's something that is your worship. It's an active worship. And we don't come to God and give leftovers we don't come to God without knowing that we're ready to enter into his presence so for just a moment prepare yourself reading from Matthew chapter 26. We recognize that Jesus and his disciples are in the upper room. They have taken the Passover. And while they were eating, Jesus took bread and he gave thanks. 
Would you bow with me? Father, we thank you so much for what you've done for us. Lord, we thank you for breaking your body for us that we might have life and life abundantly. And so, we let, we, Lord, we recognize right now and receive what you've done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. And then he took a cup, a cup of redemption, and he gave thanks. Would you bow with me? Father, we thank you so much for your blood shed for us. Lord, we thank you that it says by your stripes we are healed. And so, Lord, we receive the access to heaven, the access to you, the access to relationship through your shed blood. For the cleansing, the removing of our sin. Lord, we receive that today and we honor you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' words, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Well, good morning. I'm going to take a minute and uh, I want to share something the Lord laid on my heart for this week in specific. And I'm going to title this message this week, Stand Strong. You know, I've been thinking about it ever since I started seeing what the governor of California came out with where he said you can't worship and you can't chant in church. And I just thought, man, we're in a moment, even in that sense, we're in a moment to stand strong. We're in a moment to where we're fixed to be challenged on some things at a level we've never been challenged before. I take a lot of courage whenever I think about standing strong and I think about all the men in the Bible that stood strong, all the women in the Bible that stood strong. But I want to start in 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. It says right here, it says, it says, be on your guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. And it finishes right here. It says, do everything in love. Now, first of all, I, I want to say this. Standing strong means that there's something coming against you that you got to stand against. And, and when I hear the word courageous, I always think about the sign that, that hangs up in our house, and it's the old John Wayne quote, and it says, it says, courage is being scared to death but saddling up anyways. And I think about, I think about sometimes in this world, it doesn't mean that you're not afraid. It doesn't mean that you're not facing things that you're, that you're worried about. It means courage is, is stepping over that fear. Courage is stepping over that worry. Courage is stepping over that situation and looking at it face to face and saying, I'm going to stand. I'm going to stand in the faith of who Jesus is. I'm going to stand in the faith of what the Holy Spirit's given me, and I'm going to stand. Billy Graham said it this way. He says, when a brave man takes his stand, the spines of others often stiffen. I'm going to say it one more time. He says, when a brave man or woman, I would even interject woman in here as well. When a brave man or woman takes his stand, the spines of others often stiffen. If you've ever been in a moment where I can imagine it was like David and Goliath, this whole army was afraid, but David came in there and said, He's defiling my God. He's defiling my way. He's defiling something I can't not take a stand for. And, and he says that David took a stand. And as you know the rest of the story, David defeats, the, defeats Goliath. But guess what happens? All the rest of the army begins to stand and they run him out. You know, sometimes you're going to be put in a situation where people are going to look for you to stand so that they can stand with you. 
You know, if one person doesn't stand in a situation, then who else will? God's given you the ability to stand. Why stand strong? Well, number one, we have an invisible enemy, and we have an enemy we face eye to eye. Number one, the invisible enemy, the invisible enemy says right here in 1 Peter 5, 8 through 11, it says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist, resist him standing firm in your faith because you know the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong. This is 1 Peter 5, 8 through 11. And firm and steadfast to him be the power forever. You can't stand strong and you can't stand up if you're not standing with him. If you're not in a position that where you've been with him, you know his voice, you know what his word says, you know what, what he's asking us to do. That's what gives you the ability to stand. It says stand upon the rock of our salvation, not upon the sand. Let me tell you what the difference between a rock and the sand is. The rock is what the Bible says. The sand is what your opinions are, what other people's opinions are. We don't live our life by opinions. We live our life by the word. We live our life by what our Father says. We live our life by what he's asking us to do. And in this moment, in this world we live in, in a digital age, everybody has an opinion. But we need more of what he says. The other thing, the way that we stand strong is we pray. You want to stand strong? You want to be a man, a man of courage? You want to be a woman of courage, a woman of faith, a woman that can stand? Think about Radshak, Meshach, and Abednego. Think about how they were challenged. And they said, we will not deny our God. And they put him in the fire. And they turn it up. But another man enters the fire. And they're not burned. They said, turn it up ten times hotter. They turn it up. They're still not burned. But the guards are burned around it. You see, when you take a stand for him, he'll stand for you. He's with you. He's in you. He does not leave us nor forsake us. When you stand, he's standing with you. It says that he stands at the right hand of the throne of the Father, interceding on our behalf, looking down on our behalf. We don't stand in our own might. We don't stand in our own strength. We don't stand in our own power. Because it says right here in Ephesians 3, 16 through 20, it says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray, again, he says, I pray again, being rooted and established in love, you may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the measure of all fullness of God. Now to him who is able, to him who is able to do imme in immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine according to his great power that's at work within us. What a good news word. What a great word. He's got so much more than we could even dream or imagine. Do you think this has got him off guard? Never. I've been on the phone this week. I met with an Indian pastor who's planning underground churches in northern India. And as before we get ready to meet, he said, two of my guys just got beaten badly. I said, man, we haven't even touched it here in America, have we? We don't even know what persecution looks like in America, do we? We think wearing masks and you can't go certain places is a bad thing. And another friend of mine just lost some people because they got persecuted and killed as well. Be only because they said we believe in Jesus, nothing else. And I said, we are so privileged, we are so grateful to live in a country where we still have freedoms, but we have not tasted, even touched the scratch 
of what the rest of the world in some places have experienced since the day Jesus died for 2,000 years. But we will see a time, and we are in a time where we're going to be encouraged. I mean, we're going to be encouraged to stand strong in a greater measure. We are in a time where we will stand strong, and the way we do it is we do it together. We will stand together. And we will stand in Him. Because He's worth it. And He's worthy to be praised. Let's pray. Father, we just thank You so much. We thank You, number one, that we have the ability to stand in You. You've given us the freedom. You've given us the ability. You've given us everything we need to stand in this moment. Father, where we lack courage, would you supply it? Where we lack wisdom, would you give it? And Lord, we want to walk with you. We want to hear your voice, not the opinions of others. Jesus, we love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. We're going to be in 2 Chronicles this morning. We've got everything that's going on in the world. You can turn on the, uh, the news. You can turn on your radio. You can look at a newspaper. You can't get away from it. What is going on in our world today? We've got uh, COVID-19 numbers spiking. We've got unrest. We've got tension. We've got division. We've got all of this that's going on. And you know what I think about it? Do you want to know what I think about it? No, you don't. Because that's not my calling. And that's not my job. What God has called me to do is not share my opinion, but share, proclaim, and exclaim His truth with all that I have. What we're thinking about is, is, is what, what's going on, but what should, we, what should we be doing? What should, how should we react to this? Because I want you to know that there is a huge difference in a crisis between a Christian and a non-Christian. In fact, in every part of our, our life, there should be a marked difference between a Christian and a non-Christian. When it comes to death, Paul tells us that we sorrow not as others who have no hope. doesn't say we don't miss them. It doesn't say we don't sorrow when others die. But it says that there is a marked difference between a Christian and a non-Christian. What we need is not I, but God. What we need is not I, but God. When we come to 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse beginning in verse 1, we're going to deal with Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat is the king of Judah. And let's go ahead and look at this. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites and some of the Meunites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hezazon Tamar. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. And Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord, and in front of the new courtyard and said, Okay, he, this is the king of Israel. He's got all of these people who have come from around the region. They're at the temple. They're in front of the temple. And Jehoshaphat is going to pray. Listen to his prayer. Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand. No one can withstand you. Our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel? 
give it forever to the descendants of Abraham as your friend? They have lived in it, and you have built it in, a, in it a sanctuary for your name's sake. If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name, will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. But now, here are men from Ammon and Moab, Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them, did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but your eyes, our eyes are on you. All men of Judah with their wives and children, the little ones, stood before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Mataniah, a Levite and descendant of Asa. As he stood in the assembly, here's the priest, and he said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Jer Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. I want to stop right there for just a moment. I want to, I want to remind you, uh, this really doesn't have a lot of uh, full meaning unless you set it in context. You'll remember that the, the, the United Kingdom of Israel from 1025 to 922, they had three kings. They had Saul, who did evil in the sight of God. They have David, who did right in the sight of God. And they had Solomon, who began right, but in his older days did evil. They divided the kingdom. They couldn't get along. Division. This was not God's will. The northern kingdom lasted, Israel lasted from 922 to 722. They had 19 kings, all of whom did evil in the sight of God, except Jehu, who was mixed. We come over to the southern kingdom. We have a, a, a really uh, um, evil king named Rehoboam. Then we have one called Abijah, evil in the sight of God. Then we have a king named Asa. He did right in the sight of God. And now the fourth king of Judah is Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was a godly man. He loved God. He loved God's people. And to the very best of his ability, he served God by serving his people and leading them right in the ways of God. Here this army is coming against him. He does not know what to do. He's at a loss. So he did the best thing possible. He did the most right thing possible. He turned to God. He didn't call his, 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 his court and say, Hey, what do you think? What do you think? Well, what do you think about this? Because it's not their kingdom. It's God's kingdom. Just like today, this is not our church. We are the church and we belong to God. It is Him who leads us. It is Him who protects us. It is Him who guides us. When we come to a point that we don't know what to do, understand that's a crisis. That is a crisis. Crisis gives us fear. Crisis gives us a feeling of powerlessness. But crises are never simple. I want you to understand that. Crises are not black and white. They're deep. They're complicated. They've got many angles. And I want you to know the crises that we're in, I don't understand it all. I do not. What I understand is God is still God. This, the crises is the ability for God to show His power. God has a purpose. He is using this. But, but there is a time when God moves that we need to move from words to action. Do you ever, you know people that talk a lot? 
you know, they talk about this, they talk about that, but they never do anything. That's not God's people. That's not what He called us to do, not what He called us to be. We need to remember God has always been faithful. He has never forsaken His people. You can go back from Adam and Eve all the way up to 2020. God has always been faithful. We can trust Him. But when we come to God, you have to remember, He knows our lives. He knows who we are and what we are. We can't put on a facade. We can't put on a mask. We cannot fake it with God. You know, a lot of times Israel had uh, the big problem with it. Uh, Judah, they kind of, kind of, they went in and out of it. They had problems with idols. They had problems with idols. In other words, there were things that they would rather worship other than God. It didn't matter whether it was a little wood carving. It didn't matter if it was a bronze statue or a gold statue or a silver statue. It didn't matter whether it was uh, pleasure. It didn't matter if it was our, their comfort. But these people kept putting things in a place that only God has. What He calls and what He asks and what is necessary before God can act and before God can use us is to remove these idols. Remove these idols. We can't condone things in our, na in our land that God calls sin. Understand that. We're not, we can't just say, oh, well, okay. No. My voice is just as important as anybody else's voice. And God's voice is more important. His voice has spoken to us. When we remove these idols, this puts us in a place of gratitude and humility. Because we understand that what we deserve is God's wrath. But most of what we receive is God's grace. His love for us. Folks, we need all of God. We need all of God. All that He will, that we can, can obtain to. We need to hear Him. God is speaking. Are you hearing Him? So many times I have people tell me, Brother Worth, I don't know what you mean when you say God is speaking. I've never heard God speak. My first question is, have you ever read your Bible? If you've read your Bible, you've heard God speak. We need to be in our Bibles. We need to be seeking the face of God. We need to be listening at every corner. Is God speaking? But I want you to understand, He is speaking. He is speaking. And He has a word for you. He has a word for you. When we come down to verse 20, early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. They're going to go fight. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and the people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in His prophets, and you will be successful. What is God saying? You have to be listening before you can hear. Folks, I want you to understand that the battle belongs to God. The battle belongs to God. This isn't my battle. This is God's. I'm asking Him to use me. Because a lot of people are asking a lot of questions. What's going on? They're, everything is so uncertain. So I have the opportunity to tell them that the, mo the one thing, the absolute, that is certain, that is never changing, and that is God. And you see, this God, His absolute is that through Jesus Christ, you can have a new life, an eternal life in Him. Did you know that? You better know it and you better be sharing it. He is opening up these doors to share the gospel every single day. Folks, I want you to understand, it doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter where they're from, it doesn't matter what they do. Jesus Christ died for them. And God tells us, Jesus tells us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. 
If we truly believe this, this is our time. If we truly believe this, we're going to be shouting this. We're going to be sharing this. And God is going to open the opportunity. But I want you to say this with me. The battle is God's. Say it with me. The battle is God's. He has chosen us. He has chosen you. This is our time. A crisis is upon us and we've got the opportunity to work for God's kingdom, to share the good news, and to lead lost to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Are you with me? Amen. Are you with me? Amen. If you are with me, will you stand? We commit unto God through our actions, that we are serious about Him. We are serious about what He has given us. And we are serious in acknowledging that the battle is God's. Father, this is Yours. We are Your people. We are Your soldiers. And the time is now. People are dying and going to spend an eternity in hell. We have the opportunity to share with them what can change all of that. You, Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our King, and our God. Father, we love You. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter. Deep praise to the King Mountains bow down and the seas will roar At the sound of your name I sing for joy at the work of your hands Forever i love you, forever i stand Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you.
majesty praise to the king mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name i sing for joy at the work of your hands forever i'll love you forever i'll stand nothing compares to the promise i have in Nothing you. compares to the promise I have in, in you. you. 